All right, we are recording this conversation. Okay, hello everyone watching this on YouTube. This is another video we're going to talk about on my channel, and this one's all about street performing. So this is the fun stories that we have on street performing. This is the maybe the horror stories that you've had while performing on the street. So a quick little introduction. Tell us your name and how long have you been street performing? So Jeremy, a very quick intro to you in terms of street performing. I go by Jer Jeremy Felix, um, magician, street performer. I've been doing it three years. Uh, Nathan? Hi, uh, I'm Nathan. I've been doing it. It's, it's hard to say really now with all this broken up with the, with the lockdown and everything. How long I've done it for? Uh, technically, if, if we're talking about like doing it properly and everything, just over just over about a year now, probably about a year, okay. two, three months, something like that. Nice. Uh, Sam? I'm the least experienced here. I've done um, two shows in one day and it was almost a year ago and I'm here to, here, I'm basically here to learn as much as I can. And these Good. guys, I'm hoping to get back out there, maybe in the summer. And Samuel Hurst. Uh, yeah, magician. I've been doing it. He's a people's magician. I've been doing it about 20 years, 10 years I did uh, outside nightclubs up around Manchester. We used to turn up at like 11 at night. We'd go in the nightclub for an hour or two have a couple of drinks, me and a few different guys who were a couple of circus performers. Then we'd leave the nightclub 10 minutes before it closed, set up a little area outside and then we'd like create a little party where we were sort of doing shows and playing music and doing circus stuff. And then when I moved nice. to London 10 years ago, that's when I started doing the streets properly just as the streets. And Brett? Yeah, I've been an entertainer for 20 years and probably started off the first few years of that. Well, I started off when I was at university um, and uh, weekends we'd do uh, student balls and then we'd go to the local park or, or I would um, and do some busking there. And then that basically put me through to Chessington. I did Alton Towers, I was on the Chessington team. So the first few years of my um, of entertaining, I was sort of street entertainer on those sort of teams. So um, yeah, it's given me good grounding. Good stuff. So I think let's, let's drive the conversation into uh, anything that you can remember performing on the street? I know Jeremy, you were telling us, you were telling us something earlier about how you had a bad experience of or the worst thing you could you could go on the street. So I'll, I'll let you take the conversation wherever you want to. So let's start oh, with Jeremy then. Yeah. The worst thing that ever happened to me on the street. Uh, okay. Or maybe some of the stories, or maybe it's a funny story, or maybe the best thing if you want to. Well, it was the worst thing to happen to me at the time. This was in my first week. I was doing, I mean, obviously I'm not gonna talk about methods or anything, but I was at the end of my show doing Chop Cup. And okay. you know, so so that's, for, the, for those of that know, know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, so, and this was, and I had a, an audience of about 20 people. This is in Oxford on Corn Market Street. All, all families, all kids, just remember that fact. And just before the finale, I there was a homeless man who cut through my audience and stood right in front of me. Oh, gosh. And I'm like, uh, okay. And, you know, a second later, I kid you not, he takes out this 10-inch blue, if I can say this, dildo, throws it on the ground and goes, I think you dropped something, and then he just walks off. So in oh front of all, God. so <laughs> in, in front of all these kids and families, I'm like, uh, I, you know, you know, as the silver lining person that I am, I got the misdirection to the next thing. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, you know, uh, I was like, so, so, and then, and then a kid said, "Is that your magic wand?" <laughs> <laughs> and this scared the life out of me, and I don't know how I survived that. I finished the show, said, I'm really sorry, you know, you know, thank you, if you want to pay something, they paid me, and then I just got the hell out of there, <laughs> and, and, and literally went from one side of the street to the other. And I think that's the nature of the street, the unexpected will happen. Now, it's my favourite story. It, yeah, wow. So, you know, it, it's... That was crazy. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So uh, thanks, Jeremy, for that. So I'll, I'll tell you what, but what I did because I don't street perform, as you all know, but I have had in the past. So back in the day, I used to work with Simon Drake, and he told me, he said, your homework is to go on the streets and perform, and you got to do this for a week. So I was chatting with a lot of my friends on the streets. Diobo was the first person to push me. I was basically crowded at them, saying, no, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And then we were in Leicester Square, and he actually pushed me to do it. The first show I did, I even forgot my hat speech. I didn't have a hat. I just did it to his music, the one that he does with the mouse and the floating cigarette, if you all know that. So I, I tried street performing. I can't really have 
much to say in terms of stories but yeah so i have done it i'm not very good at this and i know how hard it is speaking of how about the the, the problems you have on, on the streets we'll, we'll get into nathan's conversation because i know he's got a lot of things to say about the street so well, a lot of things that there's a lot, a lot of misconceptions is what we were saying earlier about the streets this, yeah think, yeah we spoke about yeah uh, yeah jeremy said that just before we, we got on here actually i mean people people do often think that that the streets is going to be the same as you can go out there as a close-up magician or a stage magician it's that everybody's automatically going to like you and everybody's going to crowd around you and it's going to be what you expect because you watch other street performers do it and then they, they get a crowd it's not like that not at all it's a, um it's a sales pitch it's really mm. what it is it doesn't matter what sort of performance you're doing it's a sales pitch same as the guys that sell to, it's not a con as such but no. it's basically it's make them stay make them pay that's yes. it. That's all you've got to make them stop, make them stay, make them pay. So it is a sales pitch, and you've got to, you've got to sort of um, lose your dignity a little bit. And you do <laughs> yeah. lose your dignity. Yeah. At the beginning, at the beginning, until you start making money, you mm. have to lose your dignity because you're making no money, and you also feel like you're trying that you're that you're conning the people that you're entertaining. But as you start getting better, you still feel like you're conning them, but you have a bit more dignity because you. <laughs> right. But that, that's so much about um, confidence. And if, if you have the confidence, what Sam was saying, that, that people see that and you, you don't, it's like a good salesman. If you have the confidence, they, they see that and yeah, yeah. And they're just straight and they'll watch your show because they like you. And, yeah. and yes. that's mm. so important. Yes. I just want to say something. We are still on, joined in. So Tillon is, is all the way from India. He's actually my cousin and he does beatboxing on the streets. Uh, I don't know if you will we'll find out more about yeah, yeah. You, you're, By the way, we are Hello. filming this on YouTube. Is that okay for us to put you on YouTube? Okay, we've got some sort of uh, lag with the internet, I guess. But uh, anyway, it's Tillon. We'll, we'll ask you a few questions, but let's move on to uh, uh, Nathan. You had a few more points to talk about, isn't it? Or is that it? Or oh, I was just responding to, to Brett, what I, said, uh, what I said right now, really, is... Um... I was saying that it's, it's about it's about your character, isn't it? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Once like, I mean, you being yourself, then yeah. And to what Brett said, I think it's even more true on the street because at, at, on the street people have a, a lot more freedom to walk away. Like in a theatre or a close-up setting, they're there to yeah. get entertained. Like on the street, you don't know where they're going. So if they don't like you, they will let you know it. I mean... You, you do get really offensive and mean behavior, which is very, very small percentage. But, but the biggest thing that I found hard to deal with first was them just going, I'm gonna go, but I'm not gonna pay attention anymore. And I'm just gonna walk away. Yeah. As in a kind of, when, 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 when you're so close to having this idea of what I do is special, I wanna make people la laugh and be happy. So key to that is to make them like you. And if, if they, like, like, you know, some people have different characters, but generally they have to like you or else you're just invisible. And okay. to someone who's starting, that can be very, very hurtful. That, that comes yeah. down to, I, I found, sorry, Brenda, but- uh, No, no, go ahead, go ahead, Brad. I found when, when I was starting shows and the best way, there's, there's several, um, there's misconceptions about building um, an audience and the most important part of street show is is your audience and if oh, you can if you can start being the friendly guy and chatting to a couple yeah. and then a couple more join you and you, you're the friend, friendly guy to those they'll like you and and they'll stop and the misconception sure. is if you stand and shout then when someone's mm. shouting at you what do you do you naturally step back you naturally go away don't you yeah, yeah. But, yeah. that's the misconception but if you're quiet, hi, how you doing? Have a laugh with people. I don't know, is that true, Jeremy? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and and I've also thought of another point. Like, I think when you're first building the people there, like your edge, which is a term for that, I think there's like, there's a tipping point where if you don't, your show can suffer. Like, you have the crowd and then you turn them into an audience and obviously part of that is getting them to like you so when you do try and make them a cohesive unit like you know um one of the best pieces of advice that i was told was you need to make them act at the same time for the same reason and then that will make them like you more because you're giving them a much more intimate experience like yeah. a, like a close-up show and like 
and I, and I found if they like you, you kind of have a resp- like in any situation, you have a responsibility to take like o- almost govern and take care of the people. Like I had a few shows where some hecklers would heckle and insult other people of the o- audience just because of their reaction. And I, I, I feel very strongly that you have to protect your audience as if, well, hey, he's on my side. If you want to go and be silly, go somewhere else. Let's go, go to Nathan. Nathan, do you, have you experienced any, any hecklers and how did you deal with that situation? Or what was the story that what happened? There's always, there's always going to be little things. I mean, I mainly work uh, Covent Garden and as, as, uh, as Sam will know as well, you've got a lot of security around there. And it actually, I think it definitely takes off a lot of the nasty incidents that could potentially happen. Um, Nathan's, Nathan's also got us guys that stood behind him to protect him as well. Because mm. Nathan's quite a delicate <laughs> yeah. little thing. All of you are in such a big group. <laughs> Speaking about such a big group yeah. in, in Magic Corner and Cotton Garden, you've got like eight magicians or something waiting in line to perform. But my question is for Tillon right now, because Tillon's in India. What is, what is it like performing on the streets of India? I, I, I guess the, the, the people are very different. They, they, they're, they're, the view on street performing must be so different to to here in the UK. So tell us something about street performing in India and what are the uh, the things you have gone through. So basically, what happens here in India? Can you hear me? You can hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear um, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So play. basically, what happens is yes. What happens is uh, people comment over here. They literally shout on the street. They're like, "Oh, that guy's boring." So I try to enact as in pick up what what he's saying because I'm a beatboxer, so I put yeah. that into my music. Here. If yeah. someone says that, you know, this this guy is stupid, so I'll just put it into my music. So oh, like, wow. So that's... So, you stupid. <laughs> I do something okay. there. <laughs> right. So that's that's like having a stand-up comedian dealing with the hecklers and sort of doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, why does so I, say... I, put, I put it into my act. So that's something how I cope, it, cope up to it. Okay. To okay. all those. That's one thing that you can do. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. And um, how do they treat you on the streets? Do they respect you for what you do? There's a lot of respect here right now uh, for music in India is super. And uh, street busking is illegal here still, but uh, you know, we oh. try to incorporate and get it done. It's still, it's yeah, street busking is still wow. uh, so, illegal. Here. So you've had a problem with the cops then quite often. Has anyone yes, here yes, all... had a problem with the cops? I've had a few squad cars come okay. check me out. But as soon as they see, oh, you're a magician and you're just a guy trying to entertain and make people happy, they walk away. Nine times out of ten, the police, they'll want a card trick just before they leave. I, mean, you know, I you guess know, the problem like, is the loudspeakers. That might be a problem. Is the, is the loud music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think the music. The... More, this probably affected more than just the magicians, I guess. Uh, Sam, yes. what, about, Sam, what about you in your two days of performing? You had any experiences? Yeah, no, it was pretty um, plain. I was quite lucky. Um, uh, I came on a day when there were fewer buskers than I think there normally are. I was in Nest Square and they were very inviting, uh, which is very generous considering that I'm taking up their time and they're making a living. Um, we had a small issue with security, I think, when they were trying to set something up in the in the square in the middle and the buskers weren't having it because we had to move all their stuff off the side to the van in there to stop the show halfway through and constantly throughout the day I was hearing anecdotes from all the buskers telling me about all the bad stories they've had with security in this square and yeah. a great chance for me to say right this is what I'm getting myself into and mm. yeah I'm up for that I suppose but it's very strange hearing all these stories it really is um so yeah I mean, I'm excited but a bit trepidation obviously um, okay. And Interesting. My main, main. Sorry. Um. I just had a, a like a like a point about. Yeah. Sure. Respect. Like if like in my experience, because I got quite work because I'm quite well known on my pitch, and I've had instances and um like for whatever reason, there's a lot of homeless people around on the pitch, and I've had people heckling me homeless on a, you know, hecklers don't discriminate, I am proud to say that, uh, and the homeless people will walk up to the hecklers and go, can you not, he's, he's, he's trying to earn a living. Or if another homeless guy, you know, takes issue with something, his friends will come up and say, hey, he's, he's the magician, he's trying to earn a living, 
you know, you know, yeah. you know, give the guy some respect. And and I think that's in some cases there is an inherent respect because if people see you regularly working, then it's it's well, just. Brett, have you got any stories on the streets? We 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 have the same. Sorry, we have no, the same ahead, with Sam, the homeless in. Yeah, we have the same with the homeless in Covent Garden. Basically, you know, we have a symbiotic relationship. It's almost like our secondary job when we're there is counselling for each other. The, the homeless people counsel us, tell us how good our shows are. We counsel them, you know. Yeah. Put each other out with food and stuff like that. Or if you've heard something's happening in the street, like there's a good event around the corner, maybe go there and work there. <coughs> you know, mm. everyone helps out yeah. each other. And um, it's a re- we're street people, aren't we? Street people. Yeah. No matter whether you've got a roof over your head or not, street person. Yeah. To a really good way for me that I knew that my um, act was working, Steve Martin once said that he would do 10 spots in a day at his nightclub when he was starting. The way he knew he was good, the waitresses were still laughing. And they saw the show more times they can count, and so and and sometimes I've seen homeless people still laughing at, and so going, how did he still get the lemon underneath the cup or whatever? So for me, if I could see like the like the homeless people, or the people who frequented the area, if they were still laughing, or if they were still kind of, or like, hey guys, he he's amazing. His end thing is gonna make your day. Like, if they still like it, when, when, yeah, or, when you've done your 10th show, that means you're progressing at a rate that you can be proud of. So let's and if you film yourself, yourself oh, sorry, I was just saying... Well, if you, just gonna, yeah, go ahead, Nathan, go ahead. Oh, I, was, I was just saying as well, if you film yourself and then you can see the improvement as well, that's, a, that's, that's mm. a really good thing to do as well. Like, if I look back on shows, when I first started out, it's completely, it's completely different to say up to the present day. So you can just, and then you can, you can look at little things that aren't working and things that are, and you know what to change. So filming yourself, I think it's quite a generic thing with every sort of magic effect. But what I'm trying to get mainly on this is main, mainly while performing in the street, has, has someone thrown something at you? Or has someone come up to you and said something really like the, the dildo yeah. story you told us earlier, Jeremy? Uh, Brett, any, any input from your had, side? Um, very quick, I've, I've had, um, I've had a, a dodgy PA system. And I've been doing a, like a shopping centre. <laughs> and um, the local library, 100 metres up the road, um, they had a fire drill, so and all the firemen turned up. Okay. And, and my PA system tuned into the fire brigade. Wow. So I had a whole audience actually just listening to the fire brigade. Wow. Um, and it's just like, <laughs> what, what can I do? It's like, oh, um, sure it's going to <laughs> uh, crazy. Um, and then very quickly, quick story in um, where were we? Um, in Qatar. Um, and there's three of us, um, Fuse Robot, and I think Jason Maverick was there as well. Oh, I know and Jason our... Maverick. He's a fantastic yeah. juggler. Yes, yes. Um, and, um, yeah, and Joel, Joel Simpson. Um, we got dropped off at this venue, just an outside venue, and got told by our taxi guy, oh, yeah, be there in five minutes. And this whole, we were sort of back in the shed, and this... This whole crowd, you know, like in, in these places, they just saw us and they just crowded all around us. <laughs> just back against the wall. Um, yeah, that was that was kind of a crazy moment in a foreign place in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> just people just oh. pressing right against. And, and that's gonna, the thing, that's... anything can happen on the street. And, and yeah. it's up to you as performers, and you guys are all great. You've all got people to support this person. <laughs> that's like yeah. you say with the homeless. We realize there's so much to talk about this. So talking to you, the YouTube audience watching this video, we are going to put part two. So you're going to you're going to see this right in less than 24 hours. Part two coming up. OK, bye, everyone, for now. Enjoy. See ya. Bye bye, Brandon.